Hi guys, good afternoon. Welcome back to another interesting webinar on in-app purchasing with a web application. Before going into detail, we will first introduce ourselves to you. I am Tilna Gamala. I work as a business solutions engineer for Senate Mobile Solutions. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Jay Krishna and hope you guys know me. And today I am going to show you how to write a small web application with PHP and to use Senate Mobile's uh, PHP SDK to enable in-app purchasing with telco app stores. To start off today's things, today's discussion, we will first look at what we have been doing thus far. We started the webinar series by introducing you to the telco environment and how to develop an application based on it. On our first webinar, Dushan and Isur talked on telco application development using Node.js. On that webinar, they focused on the coffee shop example where it used the messaging, charging, and location-based APIs exposed by the Senate API management platform. Second and third webinar discussed on the topics of IoT and WebRTC APIs, which are the newest additions to the Telco application platform. As explained by Hasita and Pasindu in those APIs, will lead the next generation of Telco applications. Last week, we saw the webinar on TAP IDE for application development. That brings us to today's webinar. Today we are going to talk about in-app purchasing and how in-app purchasing API of Telco application platform can be used in web applications. If you guys have missed any of the videos that any of the webinars that we have conducted, you can view these webinars by visiting our DevSpace website devspace.senitmobile.com or our YouTube channel www.youtube.com. So let's get into business. The topics addressed today will be, we, I will first start give an introduction to in-app purchasing with Zenit APIs and after that we will look at why in-app is useful for web developers, app users and telcos. Next we will go into discuss few use cases of in-app purchasing for web and after that Jay Krishnan will take you through the process of in-app purchasing API and the demonstration that he is going to do today. So what is in-app purchasing? with Zenit APIs. In-app purchasing is basically you making a digital payment. What we bringing into the table, what we are bringing into the table is in-app purchasing making a digital payment, a way of making digital payments in a more secure manner using the secure environment that we create for applications and its communication channel. So when it comes to application development with in-app purchasing, we can basically focus on two aspects like the Android application development or it can be a web application development. When you talk about the Android application development, we have done an in-app purchasing with Android webinar some time back and you can visit this webinar by uh, visiting the link that has been given below. So that brings us to the today's discussion on how to use in-app purchasing with web. Before going into the development aspects, we will look at the benefits of use benefits for end users while using the in-app purchasing API that we have exposed. So when it comes to the benefits for end users, uh, when you are doing an in-app purchasing over the internet, what you have to do is basically you can you have to give a payment mechanism like a credit card or some other mechanism. So when you take the end users, not everybody has access to a credit card. If you take an, an emerging market like Sri Lanka or any other country that is in uh, in our region, they are not very used to using this credit card or for internet payments. And also, uh, say you have a mobile account. Mobile account is very easy. Rather than using a credit card, credit card, if you can use a mobile account, mobile wallet, or something like that, you have access to 24/7. You will be very much willing to make that payment over the internet and also you will be feeling much secure as so when you are doing a, if you take when you are doing a credit card transaction you need to give out your credit card information and in that process you are not sure why you should give information and whether it's going via a secure channel in app purchasing via senate apis will be done via a secure channel and the app users will be generating a conscious decision by authenticating the payment request that has been sent to their mobile phones. That is the benefits for end users. Now we will look at the benefits for developers. 
Patient talked about in that video that I mentioned earlier how in-app can be used to implement different charging mechanisms to Android applications. For example, give it for free for the initial usage, then charge. Same can be applied for web applications as well. Let's take a social network example. App developers can specify a set of basic features such as view another one's profile or send a connection request, something like that. And for the ones who need additional features like sending a message without being connected together or hide that you have viewed their profile information, for these functions, app developer can charge via in-app. We will look at more use cases in the coming slides. That's about the different pricing models and also another benefit for developers would be a, can the ability to target a wider market. In a wider market sense, what you can do is, earlier you must be, the application developer will be targeting a market where there is only users with credit cards. But now, he can basically target the entire market where the users are using a mobile account or a mobile wallet. Benefits for telcos. The next step would be the telcos. Now we have talked about the app developers, we have talked about the app users, and now it has come to the telcos. When it comes to telcos, telcos will be able to increase usage of their telco assets. That will be one benefit that they can get out of this in-app purchasing APIs. And the other one will be the increased revenue that will be generated from these calls and the usage of mobile accounts. Now we will look at the use cases of in-app purchasing. In-app purchasing can be used for many web applications. One such example is utility bill payments. How easy would it be if you can pay your bills over the internet and utility companies will also not have to go through the hassle of having a large number of physical locations where you can make the payments. Another example would be the online gaming. Think you have a game of 10 levels. You need to charge a premium from the gamers for the last 3 levels. First 7 levels you are not for it that much whether it's given free or not. So in that case you can basically give the first seven levels of free where uh, the users will use that application and then will be coming to the stage where they cannot leave the game without ending. So in that case, you will introduce price point and you will charge from the customer via the in-app purchasing APIs. Some other use cases are shopping carts on e-commerce portals and another use case would be the movie ticket reservation that can be done via in-app purchasing. So now I have talked about how in-app purchasing can be used and the use cases of in-app purchasing and the benefits of it for web app developers and the users and also the ones who will be the telcos. And then now I would like to give this presentation, hand over the presentation to Jay Krishna to conduct the rest of the session where he will discuss about how the flow will happen in an application and the coding session around it. Hey guys, let me start with a big picture on what we are going to code today. So let's assume you have a PHP web application running on your server and now you want to enable your user to make payments. So we're going to use in-app web SDK for PHP. So assume this is your website and you have a purchase button and when the user press purchase, we have to create an in-app purchase request and send it using the in-app web SDK. Once you send the request, it will automatically redirect the user to Telco App Store and then the user might authenticate himself, confirm the purchase details and also could be able to select his payment options like mobile account. Once the user confirm this in-app purchase request will be sent to in-app server and the transaction get executed and in-app server responds back with transaction status details. The in-app web SDK will then redirect the user to your web application with posting the response back to your web application so that you can verify the transaction and statuses. So having a lock on this uh, big picture, let me switch back to my desktop. So I have downloaded uh, in-app PHP SDK and in-app web simulator from devspace devspace.senicmobile.com and i have created a small uh, sample application iap php sample uh, you also can download this from devspace so let's open this sample application in idea you can see we have uh, 
copied this in a php sdk into this uh, sample applications uh, root directory and it has uh, a public html file, uh, directory which has this uh, purchase and complete uh, files uh, so this purchase file is uh, the first page of your sample application with the heading and a small button to purchase and the complete uh, .php file is the file which will be redirected back when your transaction is over and you also can see this uh, bootstrap is used inside these resources as uh, for styling the pages so let's let's start with this uh, purchase.php so when the user click this uh, purchase button we have to send the request so to do this uh, if you open up this sdk it has this uh, js folder has a iap.js file uh, there we have this method called send charging request and also this uh, simulate charging request uh, if you are going to use uh, test with uh, simulate simulators so first thing is we have to um, load the script in our purchase.php file so this would be iap php sdk source in app uh, in app uh, javascript js and we have this iap.js So once you have loaded the scripts, when the user click on this button, on click method, you can call simulate charging request. Uh, so now we have to create this uh, charging request. So, so in this PAP file, we have already loaded this uh, in-app charging request and in-app message codec. So you can see this uh, in-app charging request inside this PHP SDK. Uh, which take application id application name and key external transaction id parameters and also it has this uh, callback url so this is the url that will be redirected when your transaction is over and also we have this item name description amount and currency as we have in this uh, in-app uh, android uh, sdks so <clears throat> here i have to uh, create the charging request let's say for a dummy values app id app123 and let's call this app as iap sample and this app key uh, you have to get it from provisioning uh, if you are going to simulate you can use the sample key given in this uh, documentation and external transaction id also something you have to refer inside your system for the transaction and this callback url is again our complete.php file which we want to get redirected back when the transaction is over so let's say this url is uh, since i am running the local host uh, it's local host uh, iap php sample public html complete the php is the file and let's say item name is send mobile t-shirt so it's a 600 item description found and amount is uh, 600 lkr is the currency so I am giving some dummy values to create the charging request. So how are we going to create the charging request is uh, let's say request is new in app charging request new i charging request. So here we have to give the parameters app id app name. section id and callback url item name item description amount and currency so 
this uh, request we have to encode it so to encode this request we have this uh, IAP message codec file so <coughs> let's say encoded request we can use this uh, in a message codec there is two methods static methods called decode charging re response and encode charging request so we will use encode charging request uh, our request we have created this encoded charging request we have to give inside this uh, our simulate charging request method so this would be a php echo encoded charging request so that's all we have to do with this purchase so when the user click this button uh, it will send the encoded charging request to the in app server and once the transaction is over it will redirect uh, you with the post posting the response back to your complete.php so if you open this complete.php there also you can see i have this uh, message connect and all the stuff uh, loaded there so what I have to do is uh, again we will uh, get the encoded response so let's say this encoded response so this is a PHP post parameter we will be receiving and that is uh, the name is IAP response so you can get these details more in the documentation so we have to decode this so again let's say response is in that message codec we can decode the charging response so once you have decoded this thing you can verify this response uh, so this php so uh, this is just to make sure the response is actually from the uh, in-app server you, we are intended to purchase so once this is done uh, for the sake of information uh, we can just print these things and see what is happening well and inside that uh, we have to echo So we have to assign this thing to a variable. Let's say is valid. Uh, then we can print it here. It's valid. So we can just print this thing and see uh, what happens. And we also have this uh, status code and status description. Uh, the decoded response is uh, in a charging re response so you can see, see what are the functions available there uh, and you can use those function to um, actually do the things once once the purchase is over so here we can say um, response uh, get status code and this is uh, response get status detail so that's all we have to do with this uh, sample application and how to use this in a php sdk so let's recap the things so here we have the uh, 
iapjs file which we can simulate or send the charging request and we have uh, a purchase uh, php file where we create the re request and encode it and when the user click the purchase button we send the encoded request and we say the callback url is our completed php file so in our complete.php file we receive the response from the post and we decode it and we also can verify these things and also according to the results the status of the transaction uh, we can do whatever we have to do for our customer so let us copy this uh, php sample application into my uh, apache folder root directory and so here i have opened my apache let's say iap php sample here we have this uh, page coming there so first thing is uh, when this you press the purchase button it will uh, send the request to simulator so we have to open up the simulator first so let me open the simulator we have the iap web simulator there you can see this uh, bin folder we have iap web simulator so you can start it by iap web simulator console so this will start the simulator in this uh, specific port 1005 so once it started you can see what happens when you press the purchase button so it will connect to the simulator now the simulator is acting like a um, uh, telco application uh, telco um, telco app store and there you can see this uh, item name our Zenith mobile t-shirt and this uh, amount and it will ask the user to confirm purchase for uh, the item they want and if they press continue it will uh, first time it will ask to log in uh, since it's simulation we can use uh, anything and once it's signed in then user can select this uh, purchase uh, payment methods uh, they want to do this uh, transaction and once this once the user press confirm the transaction completes and it will redirect the user back to a sample application so we here we can see the status code is 6000 and success and also our response is verified okay guys that brings us to the end of this webinar series that we have been conducting over the past month Hope it was insightful for you all and you guys enjoyed a lot and gained a lot from this webinar series that we have conducted. Before wrapping up things, we will look at the TEDHack event that is going to happen on 13th and the 14th of June 2015. You can get more information regarding the TEDHack event by visiting the official site tedhack.com 2015 or you can visit our FB event page TEDHack Sri Lanka 2015 and also Regarding the TED Hack event and also the webinars that we have conducted, you can get information from the devspace.senitmobile.com site. Thank you.